So you want to buy a computer. Well, it's not so easy. Do you want a desktop? Do you want an all-in-one? Do you want a laptop? Do you want speakers? Do you want an Ultrabook, Chromebook? Oh, all the terms can make you crazy. Don't worry about a thing, because I'm here, and we're going to set you straight on this episode of Computer Train. It's time for Computer Train, the weekly TV program that trains you how to use your computer. With your host, El Paso Community College faculty member, Russ Myers. Well, you come time, now you have some money and you want to buy a computer, and you go into one of these mega boxes like uh, Best Buy or Sam's and you want to buy a computer. Well, it's not that easy, especially in today's world, there's lots and lots and lots of devices, especially quote unquote what make up a computer. So what I'm going to try to do today is give you some of the buzzwords and some of the things that I recommend that you look for before you make the purchase. First thing we're going to look at is what are the different words where we talk about computer. So we're going to take a look at different types of devices and I'm going to try to show you the terminology a little bit. Some of which they come up with new words every day that I, get, uh, that I have to get used to. So what are the type of computer devices that we're talking about? First one is pretty straightforward that we've all known for quite some time. The modern desktop really came uh, into existence and being used by the masses around 1984. So the typical desktop is the one we're all familiar with. It has the monitor, the keyboard. We have one of these which is called a tower. And then we have speakers, a mouse, your typical kind of things. One of the nice things that's come out in recent technology for desktops is this concept called all-in-ones. What you have with an all-in-one is you still have the keyboard, but everything else related to computer, there's no tower, there's no speakers, uh, everything else is built into the monitor. Okay, it's all in one device. Good thing about that is it helps you uh, unclutter your desk, there's no tower to put under your desk or anything like that. The only bad thing about all-in-ones uh, that I don't quite like is if that device goes down for any reason, essentially all devices are down. So you have to kind of make some determination there. One of the things that came out after desktops obviously that you may have used is laptops. Great thing about laptops is their portability. I'm not fixed on one desk, I can pick it up and take it with me. One of the bad things about the early desktops, of course, were that they were quite heavy. So now there's, all, uh, there's a large group of categories related to different types of quote-unquote computer devices. So I'll throw some of the names out there. If you hear any term re related to the word book, okay, there's lots of, e lots of examples like that. There's Chromebook, Ultrabooks, Notebooks. Anything when you hear the term book, what you're hopefully mentally thinking of is that it's going to be pretty much like a laptop, except it's going to be much smaller and lighter. Okay, but it's, depending on some uh, issues, it may have the same capabilities of your standard laptop. Then what we're familiar with, like with iPads, we have a series of tablets. Okay, tablets aren't really like a computer to me, uh, it's more like an entertainment device. Now within these categories of netbooks and tablets and laptops, there's a whole slew of other terms, ultrabooks or uh, all-in-ones. There's all sorts of terms. So we want to make sure we determine who we are before we go out and purchase something. So that's my next slide, is before we go shopping, let's see, why, what do we need a computer for? Why are we purchasing this particular computer? Okay, so that all starts with the type of user you are. What are you going to use the computer for? It would be like going and shopping for a vehicle. Uh, even if you narrow it down to a truck, well, there's different types of trucks. They have very powerful engines that can tow a lot. If you don't need to tow, perhaps you don't need to purchase that much of a vehicle. One of the overall things to remember, like all of us, is we have to think about price. The more characteristics or the more power that you put into this computer, generally the higher the price, just like a vehicle. Okay, so the first type of user, kind of your standard user of what they use a computer for. They do some surfing on the internet. Maybe they do a little bit of internet shopping and they purchase things. Uh, as we discussed in our previous episode of Computer Train, a lot of social media out there, they may be a Facebooker. So they just need a device where they can log on to their account and check their Facebook account and who posted things, read messages, things like that. Uh, occasionally they might send an email maybe play music once in a while, use one of the internet-based programs to play music. And of course, they're going to play these small Windows 8 games or tablet-type games. So the big one of today is Candy Crush. So they're going to play Candy Crush a lot. 
If you're that type of user, you don't necessarily need a full powered machine. Once again, like a truck, you don't need a truck that can pull a 20,000 pound trailer. There's no reason to purchase that. Okay, so the second category, this is a category more that I'm in. Um, I use my device for a little bit more than surfing and playing around, and i.e. what I'm talking about is, as I've discussed in these uh, programs before, is I use my computer to, to get work done. I still have a full-time job, I still work on projects outside of the college, and I do a lot of things with my computer that are not necessarily for play, that I actually need to get things done. So what do I mean by that? Uh, lots of episodes, I've shown you examples as I'm a Microsoft Office user. I use all the products in Microsoft Office, not only the ones we've gone over in this program, like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, but I use some of the other programs, OneNote, Outlook. Uh, I use Microsoft Access for databases, so I use quite a few programs, and I use other advanced programs. Okay, so a lot of the classes I teach, uh, we use advanced programs. So if I'm teaching a computer programming class, I use a program called Visual Basic. Okay, so all of that means that I'm going to need a little bit more powerful item. And the other thing that's important for me is I don't necessarily do all my work at a desktop. Sometimes I meet with clients outside of the college. Uh, sometimes when I take my children to different events that they're going to, I can get some work done. So I need a little bit of portability. So a desktop uh, model may not necessarily be what I'm looking for. Okay? But I need a machine that can get some things done relatively efficiently. Okay, the last category, joking around a little bit, this is the gamer. I live in my parents' basement and I'm playing high-end graphic internet-based computer games like Worlds of War, Warcraft, or something like that where I'm interacting with all these people playing these uh, high-end graphic games. If you're a person like that, you're going to need a relatively fast, powerful computer and then you have to start looking at other things like graphics. Whereas a normal user, any of the monitors that you see on the, when you go into a store are fine. But if you're going to be a high-end gamer, now you have to think about monitor issues. All right, so that's the first question that you need to do is, you know, define yourself and what are you going to use the computer for. Then when we go shopping, there's some key components of the computer that you might look for. Again, using the analogy of buying a car is, okay, um, when I buy a car, there's different engines I can get. Do I need the V8, which is very powerful, or can I get a V4? Once again, within those, there's pricing uh, that's going to affect me. So I'm going to give you some key things to, to uh, think about. So what we want to do now is know some of the components that make up these computers and make them run. I don't want to get into too geeky a level here. I want to keep it pretty straightforward. But there are a couple of terms that we need to learn that I've actually discussed in computer training in previous episodes. But now it's directly related to purchasing some type of computer device. First thing we have to think of is the hard drive. Uh, in previous episodes, I talked about where we store our files and our pictures and music. Those are called drives. So the hard drive is the one internal to the machine. There's two essential kinds of drives. Okay, so if you're looking at an advertisement in the paper at Walmart or something like that, uh, one of the initials you'll see is HDD. This is hard disk drive. This is a little bit older technology, but it's tried and true, and of course it's least expensive. The HDD drive is the one that's going to be inside that, you, that uh, is in your desktop. Okay? Now with portability, those drives were kind of heavy, so the technology has advanced a little bit. And another type of drive they come up with is SDD, solid state drive. The key difference between these two types of drives is the hard drive is still physical. There's physical platters that are spinning to get our data. The solid state drive, although not quite like your USB drive, it's in the same genre about electronics. Things are electronically stored. Okay, since things are electronically stored, SDD drives, of course, are much faster. We don't have to spin this to get to our data. Of course, if you want faster, what are we looking at here? Dollar signs. Okay? So as you get to smaller devices, if you go from a desktop to an Ultrabook, which is very light, there's not usually going to be a hard drive anymore. There's going to be an SDD drive. Okay, so once again, those smaller devices, because we have to miniaturize everything, those are going to be higher in price in general.
Okay, so once again, you got to do a comparison. Uh, HDD drive is going to be the least expensive, give you the most amount of data storage for your money. One thing that I've noticed that as it comes up is I've seen some computers that have combo. They actually have both drives. And what they're trying to accomplish there is all of the files related to uh, booting the computer that we've talked about before when you first turn on the computer, all of those files are stored on a very small SDD drive. Once again, they're very fast, so when they talk about this computer boots in less than a minute, the one of the ways that they got that to happen was they took all of those files off of the hard drive and put them on this more electronic drive. And then as you use the device, as you work in Word or Excel or whatever you're going to do in the computer and you need to save files, you store those on your regular hard drive. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Once again, all of these different examples are going to relate to pricing. One thing I would recommend for you if you're one of those people, which I've done in the past, is if you work with lots of files and video and music, don't put all of those files on your regular computer drive. Purchase an additional external hard drive and put all of those files on that external hard drive. Especially with the hard drive, it'll keep your computer up and running and make it much faster, which I've discussed in uh, other episodes. Okay, so a big thing to look for is the hard drive. Depending on the type and the storage, you're going to pay different amounts uh, for those devices. Second big thing we want to look for for the components is something called the CPU, the Central Processing Unit. Okay, the Central Processing Unit, as you can see from my little picture here, this is where all the thinking or the processing of the computer gets done when you tell it what to do. Obviously, the more processing power we have, the faster our computer is. By the way, a big game that's out right now is Trivia Crack, where you have to answer questions and you play against your friends. So I want to make sure you don't miss this question. Does anybody know who sculpted the thinker? I'll ask my crew here. Three, two, one. Uh -uh. It was a sculptor called Rodin, so don't miss that question. All right, so the more processing power that we can get, the faster our computer is going to work. Once again, it kind of relates back to why are we using this computer. Let's take a look at a couple more specific items here, though. Two major chip manufacturers, okay, so the CPU is called a computer chip. Two manufacturers of that are AMD or Intel. And once again, there are smaller companies that also produce that. Uh, don't forget, just because a computer is cheaper does not mean it's better. When you buy a cheaper computer, it may have cheaper components. Okay, so that's another thing that we have to watch out for. Uh, just for an example, I'm going to use Intel to describe the different levels, uh, but AMD has this same kind of thing. Okay, so in the Intel example, their chip right now is called the Core i3. That is one of their slower level chips. And when I say slower, that doesn't mean that we tell the computer to do something and we have to wait a half hour for it. It just means it's not going to process as fast as uh, something else. Just like a car, just because you have a four-cylinder engine does not mean you can't drive 70 miles an hour. It just means you can't drive 150 miles an hour. Okay, so there's a, a realm of in-between there. All right, once again, this kind of category goes back to the type of user that I was describing. So this would be a computer maybe doing some emailing, some surfing, some basic activities, playing a standard game uh, that you might play, uh, straightforward that an average user might use. Okay, once again, this next type of chip or category, this is something more in the category that I was. Okay, this is a person who's going to do multi-app use, might use the full-blown Microsoft Office suite, is going to be doing some work with their computer, and is going to need some faster processing speed. Okay, the last category, Core i7, let the games begin. And that's what I was referring back to the last category of user, is if you're a gamer. If you're a gamer, these high-end graphics, they're going to take a lot of processing to make sure they come on the screen and they're lifelike and they're not delaying. If you have a slow processor, it starts to delay the game and you can visually see it on the monitor. So you want to make sure you have a computer as fast as possible. Not only that, like I was telling you, you actually have to look at the characteristics of the monitor to make sure it matches what you're going to need. Okay, once again, within these levels, the higher or the faster the CPU is, the more you're going to pay in price. Okay, so 
this is kind of the category I'm in. I'm not a high-end gamer. I don't play games in the community or anything like that. Uh, but I do have a lot of work to do and I don't want to spend too much time. If you're just, maybe you're retired and you just use your computer to interact with your children, you do some surfing, you buy some things, uh, there's nothing wrong with the lower end. Okay, so you got to make some decisions about, you know, your personal characteristics. The last thing is pretty straightforward, uh, but this, if you remember, one of the uh, issues I discussed in a previous version of Computer Train is a lot of times people say, how can I make my computer faster? One of the easiest ways to make your computer faster is to look at your RAM. This stands for Random Access Memory. Um, from a previous show, we described that a little bit, that this is a temporary electronic storage location where the CPU will put information temporarily as it goes off and does other things. Uh, like a human brain, this could be sh thought of as short-term memory. We just put it in there for a second, and when we need it, we can recall it instantly. Okay, when we shut off our computer, the RAM clears out, just like after a while, whatever you had in your short-term memory is going to clear out unless you put it into long-term. Long-term memory we associate with data storage. Okay, so depending on your budget, the higher price, I mean the higher amount of RAM you can get, the faster your computer is going to be. Uh, if you have a current computer right now and you think it's operating a little slowly, I've discussed that in previous shows, but one of the first things you can do is take a look at how much RAM you have. You probably can upgrade it for $100 or less and it will speed up your computer. So there's three major things we look for. CPU speed, then we look at RAM memory, and then the type of hard drive. Okay, within all of those categories, you're going to be spending different amounts of money. All right, so in this example is, why are these types of things important when I look at a computer? Well, the example that I'm showing on the screen is if you have a computer that you want to upgrade to Windows 8, or if you go purchase Windows 8, those types of operating systems and applications have minimum requirements for your device or computer. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go through a couple of these items in the list. One, as I was talking about, this comes straight from Microsoft, is the processor. That's CPU. Okay, so they're talking about you need one gigahertz or faster. Don't worry about understanding what a gigahertz is. Just look for that number, one gigahertz or more. I just talked about RAM memory one gigabyte, okay? Once again, these are the bare bone minimums. I would definitely get more than that. On my previous slide, I just said my minimum would be get four gigabytes minimum of RAM, okay? They talk about hard drive space. You need at least 16 gigabytes of hard drive space to store Windows. If you buy a modern machine right now, your hard drive is probably going to be even the low end, 250 gig, uh, 500 gig, so you'll be fine. Uh, these issues may come into play if you try to upgrade an older computer. Okay, and then here's where I was talking about, this is all talking about the gamings. Um, if you're into gaming, you have to specifically look at your monitor, which is called graphics. You need, you need a specific graphics card. One of the things I did like about this list, uh, again related to the type of device you need, is this part about touch. Okay, Windows 8 and Microsoft Office 13 were specifically designed to work with touch devices like tablets. Okay, so if that's something that interests you and you want to be able to do that, which I, I believe you do want to because that's what I recommend, is you make sure you look for a device that has touch. If it does not have touch, then any program, Windows or anything, you will not be able to do that. Like your smartphone has touch capability. If you want that on your other device, then you have to look for that. All right, so I brought up a website that's going to help me make decisions, and it's going to show you some of the things that I've discussed. I'm using a uh, website from Microsoft, but there's lots of websites out there. I looked at Amazon. They have a, a special section. So you're just looking at a website that will ask you some of these questions that will steer you into a particular type of device that you might want. So here we are about finding my new PC. And what we're going to do is answer a few questions based upon our usage, what we're looking for, and then it'll give us some ideas about devices that we might want to use. So let me click on getting started here. All right, so the first question was one of the ones that I referenced a second ago about the portability. How portable do you need your PC? So some of the answers here, I don't really need to be that portable. I mostly use my computer at home. Okay, second one is, 
I sometimes take it with me. Okay, and the last one is that I'm always on the go, so I need to have it super portable. So some of those questions probably are going to deal with weight. If you need something super portable, you go on airplanes, you do traveling, and you always need a computer, they're probably going to recommend you need something smaller. If you're doing most of your work at home, they're probably going to show you some desktop models because you're staying at home and you don't need to take it with you. I'll go ahead and answer the second one. This is kind of like me. I do a lot of work at home, but I obviously sometimes take it with me. So I'm going to answer that second one. Okay, this was talking about the kind of CPU power. How powerful do you need your PC or tablet to be? I need plenty of power for programs like Photoshop, Illustrator, and AutoCAD. Okay, so as far as programs go, these are very CPU intensive programs. These are very high end programs. Um, I don't use programs like these. I do use a little bit of Photoshop, but not much. The next one is powerful enough for email, web surfing, and programs like that come in Microsoft Office. That's probably more my category. And then I don't need it too power powerful. Once again, I'm a standard user maybe. I do a little surfing, I do some email, and I check my Facebook account. Okay, so once again, I'm going to pick that middle one. I need a decently powerful I don't need to do, you know, 500 miles an hour. Okay, so are you into editing movies or photos? Okay, so it says I watch a lot of photos in HD, that's high definition. Anytime you see high definition, that means we're going to need a little bit more power. I edit photos, I edit my own videos. And this one again, this editing videos one, this is going to be another high-end graphic program that you're going to need some power. Uh, this one is I have a large collection of movies and photos that I've used several times a week. And this one, the last one, I sometimes watch things on YouTube and look at photos. Once again, as far as editing, I don't personally do too much of that. I have friends that do that. Um, I definitely do watch movies. I YouTube things. Uh, I instruct my students. Sometimes there's lots of great YouTube videos related to computer skills. So I'm going to pick the third one on this one. I don't watch too many, you know, digital movies on my laptop. Obviously, I have a television at home that I do that. And when I travel, I use this old technology that a lot of people forgot and are not familiar with, but I read a book. Okay, last one is, do you uh, play games on your PC? Once again, when we say games, you have to differentiate what kind of games we're talking about. Are we talking about, you know, uh, poker or Candy Crush or Trivia Crack? Or are we talking about high-end graphical war games? Okay, you can't just use the term games there. So let's see what the categories are, they say. It says, I love PC games, especially one with detailed graphics like Call of Duty. Okay, I generally do not play games like that. Sometimes I play casual games like Andrew, Angry Birds, Fruit Ninja, Bejeweled, Candy Crush, uh, things like that. No, I really don't play games. Um, I'm kind of in the middle category. I don't play a lot of games. Once again, I use a computer uh, for work. But once in a while, my friends will drag me in. Like I, I definitely like this trivia crack one because at least it asks you questions and make you think. I do not like games. <coughs> excuse me. I do not like games like Candy Crush, where you're just you know pressing things and making things fall. That kind of a mindless game to me. So I'm going to pick that middle one. I know I just offended everybody. I'm sorry. All right, do I use your PC for work? Well, we already said that I definitely do that. Let's look at the categories. All the time, my work requires a PC that can run heavy duty programs like Photoshop, QuickBooks. I'm not really in again with these high end graphical programs. So one of the things that you have to think about if you have a computer right now and you go purchase one, take a look at the system requirements. Okay, second one is often I keep my calendar projects organized with Microsoft Office. That's me. Okay, not really. I mostly use my PC for entertainment. Facebook, surfing, uh, playing a little game here. So I'm in the middle category. Okay, here is the important part, right? Anytime we purchase any high-end item, we got to talk about money. What is your budget for a new tablet or PC? Okay, so if you say that you're a gamer and you do all this heavy duty stuff and you tell it you want a system under $400, it probably is not going to come up with anything. As you start adding the capabilities and you get faster and more powerful, you're going to need a faster machine, which means more money. Okay, 
I'm probably, I'd like to keep it under 800, uh, maybe a little bit over 800, I'm not quite sure. So I'm going to say a little bit over 800. Okay, the college is buying it anyway, so I should say over 800. Oop, I hope my boss didn't hear that. All right, so let's take a look at what it found for me. All right, so here's a nice one. Here is kind of a system that is detachable. So essentially what this is, is a laptop, so it has a keyboard. Anytime I, I, I buy a device, since I'm a worker, I want a full keyboard where I can type things. What's nice about this is this part right here, and this is something you might look for. It's detachable, which means the screen detaches. So what you have is kind of a notebook where you have full capabilities, but then you can detach it and you have a tablet. So you can play your games on it and go somewhere else and not have the keyboard. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. And I actually have one of those and it's very, very nice. Okay, so here is a full-blown laptop or notebook. Here's another type of notebook. And here's an example of what I was referring to all a uh, second ago, if you can look at this last one. This is an all-in-one. So notice there's no tower like I showed you before. There are no speakers. Everything that you need is contained in there. Um, it's not really portable because usually the screens in an all-in-one, you get a pretty large screen, so you don't want to be carrying that. That's more like a desktop model, but everything is compacted in one. The other thing that I would recommend that you look for is, for me, I need a place to plug in my flash drive. I do a lot of work with different types of people. I teach classes, and my flash drive has all the data that I need, so I need that portable. So one of the things you might look for is USB ports. You're not going to find those on the smaller uh, devices that are kind of what we call netbooks, which are to surf the internet. So I hope I've cleared some of those issues out for you. Make sure you get a little bit more specific when you look for a computer. And when you get it, let me know and I'll help you use it on the next episode of Computer Train.